Ragnika wants to present. Is that? Oh uh, yeah, that would be me. Okay. Uh, so while we give time for judges to wrap up uh, their scoring, uh, we'll have you set up yourself. Can you? Oh, okay. Let me let me make you the presenter. It's up now. You guys ready? Other? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, Trisha. So, um, all right. So, Trisha, can uh, is, are you also speaking? Can you check your microphone quickly? Yeah. Hello. Can you, say can you hear me? Okay. All right. Yeah, we can hear you. So, good. Judges, ready? Uh, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, uh, what are organic? Over to you. Hi, my name is Athar Chilar, and me and Trisha are co-founders for Water Organica. Our main motto is that we are providing you with your basic necessities for a cheaper price. So, first of all, we noticed a problem that our freshwater supplies were expected to be depleted by the year 2050 at current consumption rates. Um, also, desalination devices um, had a hard time to produce large quantities of water. So with our plan, Water Organica, we saw the opportunity to harvest uh, seawater and effectively produce uh, a lot of drinkable water. Okay, so our solution is, as Trisha said, to provide drinkable water using the ocean and solving the problem of our fresh water uh, depleting resources. So in our water purification system, we combine three types of technology solar energy, membrane chemistry, and nanobots. Um, the solar energy and membranes would be very cheap, and the main cost would be nanobots. That's how we're allowed to price our products so low. Um, essentially, what we'll have is a machine um, sitting next to the ocean where uh, it brings in seawater and uses solar energy to evaporate the water, then go through a condensation process, which removes the salt from the water, and the membrane chemistry acts as kind of like a microscopic net, removing any harmful particles in the water. And the final stage of nanotechnology will make sure that um, there's uh, that the water is completely clean. So we want to sell our water as cheap as possible compared to normal water brands. We want to ensure that um, we are the same quality as other water competitors. So we provide a high quality inspection check. So we have the unfair advantage of combining three types of technology, such as solar energy, membrane technology, and nanotechnology. So our underlining magic is that the, the only main cost would be nanobots. Um, currently, Poland Spring claims that they're using freshwater resources, but as we said, those are going to deplete soon. And the current desalination devices are way too ineffective, expensive, and just don't um, produce enough water to, to feed the population. So, therefore, uh, with, our under, with our unfair advantage, we can price it so low and outcompete our competitors. So, we use multiple business models to help us formulate our idea, our concept, and yeah. soon... Uh, more storage, storage, kinetic, you know, Michelle, uh, After this. what I realized is uh, 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 not a mute. Uh, huh? Less than one person know about the kinetic energy at the moment. Really? Is that out the five billion? Uh, I think this one is someone is someone is someone's uh, uh, showing Shrindi. Who? Uh, Sandeep. Okay. Okay, all right, I think we are good now. Okay, so we used Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we used multiple business models to help us uh, evaluate our idea and develop our concept and later help launch our idea. We used help from the Lean Canvas model, which helped us set up a cost and revenue structure. Um, and we also were able to use that to get feedback from uh, later on, you'll see grocery stores where we sent out emails and went to our potential customers. Okay, so our go-to market plan is um, advertisement in stores, emails to friends, word of mouth, and newspaper. 
the first and third one we feel are the most important because word of mouth is um, an extremely useful advertising um, uh, technique that you, that most businesses use to gain momentum. And um, we also learn from our customer feedback that um, uh, they don't really value uh, advertisements for um, grocery items in uh, in television shows or radios. They they mostly make their decisions in the store. So if we have advertisement in stores and we say that we do have the cheapest water possible, then we will be able to generate more revenue. And our main other thing is that we have connections to researchers in labs. So uh, our, our uh, water makes go through a high quality check and the researchers will be um, high profile and that'll, we can add that as a seal on our product. So for competitive analysis, we noticed that our competitors were the major water sellers such as Aquafina, Poland Springs, and Kirkland. So we needed to fight for space at the local stores such as Costco. This is where our unfair advantage came in, where we are combining different types of technology to provide the cheapest water out there. And again, like my partner said, we provide quality checks so our water is safe. So we are providing both the cheapest and the safest water. Um, so currently, me and Trisha are both co-founders, and I handle most of the financial accounting portion of the business, while she handles the marketing. Um, with our investing process, uh, we will probably start off with an investment from our families, then we will go towards the angel investing round once our business gets momentum, and eventually, like most businesses, we plan to go public. Um, with, uh, we, have, we plan to have one marketing director, one financial director, and one legal man. So for financial projections and key metrics, we broke down the cost structure to fixed costs and variable costs. Under fixed costs, we have the warehouse, the wages that are paid to the workers, interest expenses, and insurance expenses. And for the variable costs, we have the nanotechnology, which is the nanobots and the membrane technology. Uh, we did a lot of research and we uh, found out that if we sell $1 per bottle, and each bottle is a liter, so if we sell 200 uh, thousand bottles in a year to local stores and 300,000 bottles to major chains, we would be in business. So we got those numbers um, from looking at 1% uh, of what major chains like Poland Spring or Aquafina, uh, how many bottles they sell in a year. So we took 1% of that number. And the, uh, these 200,000 or 300,000 bottles, uh, if we get that in one year, then we'd be in profit. However, if we only sell bottles to a major chain uh, in three years will be easily getting profit. So our current status accomplishments to date are that we have received customer feedback through forms we sent out and before the COVID crisis, me and Trisha have gone to many uh, local, local stores as well as big warehouses and got customer feedback. Uh, we've also sent emails to family and friends and as said earlier, we have made a working blueprint of the machine and the right, you can see a very uh, rough sketch of the logo. Thank you for listening. Uh, is there any questions? Dennis? Uh, yeah, on the on your battles, what, uh, what were the costs and what's your anticipated R&D cost to develop this technology? Oh, uh, yeah. So if you go back to this slide, um, so in terms of revenue, we're going to sell it $1 per bottle. And the cost per bottle, um, what we worked it out is that if we have around 10 machines, which is the 30,000 because it's 3,000 per machine, and then uh, we have the nanobots, which is about which costs about $16 per 500 liters, then we would need to sell um, this many bottles in order to remain in profit. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Vish, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, can I go, go first? Uh, go, go, ahead, go ahead with you. Yeah, uh, I just want to find out, uh, have you thought about how you will uh, manage your supply chain in the COVID times? 
what are, what are Amazon and Aquafina, what are they doing uh, for their supply chain? Have you thought about that? It's called... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, it's just okay, so uh, they... adapt, mm -hmm. adapting to the crisis. Yeah, so uh, we did actually do the research on that, and we found that um, Poland Spring and Aquafina or the other major water chains, um, they're not doing that much to change their business uh, structure um, because their their um, their main business model is selling to warehouses. So it's um, with their employees and things, they must have taken certain measures. Uh, but in terms of supply and distribution, um, they're still um, supplying to just major chains like Costco and. Um, Costco handling the procedure of um, selling the bottles to the consumers. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, so, we need to a big organization in order to, you know, extract water from the sea. So, what, what is your plan for that? Yeah, so we're going to start off um, small. We're only going to have uh, 10 machines about, and uh, I've seen on this side. And um, that's why we only the, the amount of bottles we took, as I said earlier, is only 1% of the amount of bottles that the major chains uh, sell in a year. So uh, we have taken that into account. And um, we do realize it's going to be small. And we, um, we, have, um, we do have certain locations near certain coastal areas, which would be um, excellent locations for our warehouses to be. But again, there would be... Um, small, like only 10 machines in each warehouse for, for now. Thanks. Right. Uh, thanks, uh, judges, and uh, we'll give them 30 seconds. And team, what are organica? Thank you. Great job. Uh, we'll move on to the